Okay. Level one, today we're looking at the basic steps of how DNA forms protein and also how to read a codon chart. For this process, DNA turns into RNA. This process is called transcription. This is where the code for the protein formation is actually being generated. RNA then turns into polypeptide, which will eventually fold into a functional protein. The process by which RNA turns into polypeptide is called translation. And this is where the code for the protein formation is actually being read. Note, a DNA has two strands that are in a double helix fashion and they run anti-parallel to each other. The nitrogen bases that are found in DNA include A, T, G, and C. A is adenine, T is a thiamine, G is a guanine, and C is for cytosine. Now let's take, for example, we have a portion of a DNA strand, A, T, G, C, A, C, and G, A, A. Now to form our corresponding strand, A will bond to T, T bonds to A, G bonds to C, C bonds to G, A bonds to T, C bonds to G, G bonds to C. And our A's, they bond to T. Now remember that they run anti-parallel to each other. So therefore, if the top strand runs from 3 prime to 5 prime, then the bottom strand or the complementary strand must run from 5 prime to 3 prime. Now we have a very short portion of our DNA structure. Let's say, for example, we're going to transcribe the top strand, and transcription actually means to copy. Now, the first step to do here is to write the complementary or the opposite strand to this transcribed strand and change the T's into U's. So here, our first nitrogen base in the bottom strand or the complementary strand is T, and it represents thiamine, and our U's represent our uracil. So our first nitrogen base, which is T, we're going to change that now into U. We're going to rewrite the others. So we're going to rewrite A. We're going to rewrite C. We're going to rewrite G. Now we have a T. We're going to change that T into U. We have a G. We're going to rewrite that. We're going to rewrite our C. We have two T's. We're going to change those two T's into U's. And this is now our mRNA. And mRNA is the messenger RNA. For the next step, what you're going to do here is to write the complementary strand for the mRNA. But please note that G must bond to C while A bonds to U. So therefore, U bonds to A, A bonds to U, C bonds to G, G bonds to C, U bonds to A, G bonds to C, C bonds to G, U bonds to A, and the final U bonds to A. And this is now our tRNA, which is our transport RNA. I just want to point to something right here. Notice that the tRNA looks just like the transcribed strand, except the T changes into U. The reason for that is because transcription is a process of copying. So your final product, which is a tRNA, must look like what is being copied. So that's another shortcut. So you can skip these if you want and just go straight ahead, rewrite the transcribed strand and change the T's into U's. Now, our next step here is to match each codon to the corresponding amino acid in the codon chart. A codon is a set of three nitrogen bases. I have already grouped them into groups of three. So our first codon here is AUG. And we're going to read this into a codon chart. So a codon chart is just a chart that actually groups 
the amino acid base on the codons or a group of three nitrogen bases. Now we're going to read AUG into a chart. So how we're going to read this, we're going to go into a first letter, which is this from the central point. And so our first letter here is A. Then we have U. Then we have G. And this corresponds to the amino acid methionine. So methionine is abbreviated MET. So that's our first amino acid there. Now our second codon, which is CAC, we're going to read that into a codon chart. It's looking for CAC, starting from a central point. So our first base is C, then A, then C. And this is histidine, which is HIS. And so this is our second amino acid. Now our third codon, based on this example here, is GAA. We're going to read our GAA into a codon chart. Starting from the central point again, looking for G. So we're going to start with G, A, then A. And this corresponds to the amino acid, glutamic acid, which is GLU. And that's our third amino acid. Now remember that a bond between two amino acids Two amino acids is called a peptide bond. So therefore, a long chain of amino acids is called a polypeptide, which will eventually fold into a functional protein structure. So here we are at the end of it, where we actually form our, our protein from DNA and how we read our code and chart. And so I want to tell you that I truly appreciate you watching this lesson, and I want to remind you that consistency leads to great things. Have a blessed and wonderful day. See you soon.